My name is Rose Julie. I am 25 years old. I am a graduate of BSc Biochemistry. Currently, I'm majorly doing writing. I am a mother to a very handsome young boy. So, growing up as a young girl, my greatest fear was to raise a broken family, one that has frictions, constant frictions, divorce or separation. The worst was I never imagined myself getting pregnant before marriage. I feared getting pregnant before marriage. Interestingly, I got pregnant before marriage. And that changed my life completely. I'm born and raised in Nairobi. We used to stay in Madare North. I come from a family of two kids. My sister, my younger sister, and I. I'm the firstborn. Um, by the time I was able to understand my environment, I noticed that other kids would talk about their dads. It was always my dad has done this. But I didn't really know what Baba Yangu is. Because in our house, it was me, my mother, and my aunt, who was our house manager. They're called like that these days. Uh, and it really bothered me. It was as serious as whenever any male person would come to our home, I would, I would want to inquire from them if they knew my dad or they are my dad. Uh, it became more serious when I was going to school, when I started going to school. Kids would be taught about family setup. And I remember my first drawing, I drew my mom, my aunt, and I. That was a family, a complete family to me. And the rest drew their fathers and mothers and them. In as much as I was having that void of like there's something that was missing within me and probably it would be the dad, the dad issues, my mother was also not really available. And I understood she had to work, we had to survive. So the house managers we had ended up forming the motherly figure that, um, that I was looking for. They ended up becoming up the mothers that would influence what I would end up becoming. Like the character would develop. It was through them. And I had one specific that I loved dearly because she would go anywhere with me. When whatever I needed, she would make sure I have it. If she was going anywhere, she would live with me. Even if she was going to visit her family, she would even request my mom to go with me for that visitation. So she ended up forming majority of the characters I developed when I was a kid, including rest restricting myself from expressing what I really feel inside. I felt like I'm her child more than I was a child to my mother because she was close. I was free to tell her anything. If someone would, uh, if if I'm playing outside, alafu mtoto yote ni chokozi ukuinje. Ndarudi ni ni mambi anti. Fla ni fla na ni fa ni ni. I mean chokoza, and she would go out there and roar. Actually, kunonyadi that she's my mom. Toto anani? Ah ah. We were ah anini. She used to tell me what is right and what is wrong. She would tell me in isawa i apa na usfanye i fanye i. And as I bonded more with her, she would do some things with me which I thought were normal. I thought it was okay for people to do these things. I was just a kid, barely even going to school. I wasn't yet going to school. And even when I joined school, since she was still around, she would do the same things. My aunt was a lesbian. Let's, let's call her a lesbian. 
she she whenever she had the urge of involving herself sexually intimately she would take me she would use me and when i was growing up i thought that was normal but with time it it's like it shaped me i started viewing myself <laughs> more like a male person i felt like i was i was a male more than a girl a, a, a girl who's growing it affected my relation relationships with my fellow kids i used to love girls and people would think it's ah she's a girl she loves girls but that was not it i loved girls cuz i felt like i was a boy when she was fulfilling her sexual desires with me she was not doing it with me like she's the she's the male i was the male who's satisfying her so i never practiced this this thing with my 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 peers but in school i did not see them as as my fellow as my as girls like me i saw them as girls then i was a guy i was a, i was a boy then them they were girls uh so my aunt started doing this with me when i was almost 4 years then for a period of 2 years she we continued like we continued we continued doing it it was not consistent but whenever the urge came for her she would do it but not consistently for me it felt normal it was okay then at some point she left not that she was caught or anything but she just left when i was growing up i never really had a safe space to speak about what i feel or question anything that's the reason i never never even ever questioned about the whereabouts of my father but i chose to look for him from anyone who would visit so even when i loved my aunt I never saw any reason to why I should report this or tell anyone this because at the end of the day whom was I going to tell my mother would leave early come back late and sometimes I would be asleep and there was nothing that gave me a reason to report it this is my aunt she loves me she's taking good care of me she's doing everything for me this is the right thing we are doing the right thing there's nothing wrong with it that's how i felt about it so she left i was left with some bits of confusion but still i did not feel like i should report anything it was normal it was like ah okay life continues i joined school i'm just there i'm a girl but i'm a boy handsome boy actually a handsome girl i used to call myself that i'm, I'm a handsome girl and then there are girls i would play with them normal games by the way but i wouldn't see them the way they would see me so eventually with uh, with time i really struggled with it i really did struggle with it but with time um it was eroding it was it's like, it's like i was now realizing you no know, we have girls and i'm a girl then we have boys and and they are boys i'm a girl we don't wear this those are boys they are wearing those things and by learning that in by learning that in school because of how i used to talk and play with my my peers i finally realized there's a difference but still i did not realize a difference in terms of sexuality in terms of intimacy but i just knew there's a difference these are boys and this how these are how boys are then there's me who's a girl and this is how I'm supposed to be conducting myself i believe teachers do a, a great job in school because most they spend most of the time with 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 the, with the children they get to analyze a problem they get to notice the problem first before the parents and i think it's very important if parents will take time with their children and provide a space where the child can openly speak about something where a child can come and say mom or dad auntie 
leo alinilalisha kwa kitanda akanifanyia hivi then boom you know ah there's a problem here if there's no that there's no that space the child will not know that's wrong and it's good if parents also tell their children what is right and what's wrong come and tell your child if someone touches you like this this is wrong as early as even 3 years when they can or even 2 years when it depends on how fast the kid began talking and understanding things like just let them know that those are their private parts and nobody should touch them or nobody should do something with them around the age of 6 yeah something i'd longed for for a very long time uh was happening uh, a man came into our lives uh, i was now going to have a father finally i will talk about baba yangu you know and the face he presented to me at that time was a very wonderful face i felt so nice to have a, a dad i would finally go and tell people you know Ah, hata mimi niko na baba yangu. Baba yangu alifanya, you know. He was a uh, he came he came in as a humble guy. The most important thing, I did not know whether he was my real dad or not, but I appreciate the fact that he ex he had accepted me. You know, acceptance is very important. It has a way of building your self-esteem. So, I finally was like, yeah, I have a dad. And uh, things went and finally we were moving in with him. And uh, I was happy. I was a happy kid. I was having a dad, and, and that was important. So with time, I started seeing some changes with, with him. It was no longer the, the, the dad who would, you know, come and be like, ah, Rose, he used to call me Rose Coco. Ah, Rose Coco. He became the dad who would, who would be good to me when my mom is around. He will be like Rose Coco and all that. When my mother is around. When my mom is not around, he will be a different person. He will be as different as... I understand education is very important for any child. And I know someone will tell me, look how you turned out. But at that time, I did not need to turn out this way i needed to be protected i needed to be understood i needed to to be allowed to express myself to play but i didn't have that privilege i used to play while hiding if anyone will be outside the gate and tell me baba kwanakuja the speed at which i would leave that game and get into the house was I think a cheetah wouldn't really manage that speed. <laughs> it was so, I was so fast. That's, I became horrified of the fact that my dad is coming. It was no longer Baba Yangu. It was Baba Yako. It was not Baba Yangu and Akuja. It was Baba Yako and Akuja. Speed. And um, one thing I appreciate about him, his methods might have been very absurd, but I usually account to my love of reading and writing to him because at at that young age in was it pre unit i was writing composition <laughs> i was reading i was reading one truth is he found me when i was not doing performing well in school i was i couldn't even read a b c d well but with time i i learned them i became better in school at first, our, our, our relationship was, was nice. And I think that's why I was, I was improving in, our, in my performance. But when he, he, he began changing, yes, I, may, I maintained my performance. But not, it was not because I'm really performing because I'm the best or I'm, I'm so bright. But it was because I feared the embarrassment that would, that would, that, that would come with my failure. You would go back with a report and you're not in the top three and the, the words he would he would use. And those words made me feel less of myself. So I strived to be at the top so that I don't end up offending him. I cannot really understand what really changed in our relationship because he was just close. He 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 was close. He was close. He was my dad. 
But then it was just a sudden change. I, I didn't understand it. It was just a sudden change. He was just no longer the dad I knew. He, he would just have these hurtful words. It's, it's like there's something wrong. And once again, the feeling of void, that like there's something still missing, came back. I, uh, he would tell me to go out of the house at night after eating, probably because I was feeling sleepy and last money pig no pepper. But and, and maybe it was because they were having family meetings with my, my mother. That time we were staying in Kangemi. My mother and that they didn't want me to hear. But you see, when I was going out or outside, personally I would not even think about those meetings they were having. I would think about why does this man hate me so much? My dad would even lock me up in the house. He will leave a bunch of assignments, papers, yeah. The house shows it is right. I was supposed to do them. And yeah, I'm supposed to study. But you see, all work with no play makes Julie a dull girl. A boring girl, actually. He used to lock me up and go out with my sister, my younger sister, to to play. Uh, to they used to go for for walks and whatever. I used to be left inside the house. He has locked me from outside. The most horrific thing about this locking <laughs> inside me inside was that one day our neighbor, our drunk neighbor, came home, came back home during the day. And I think the wife had left him because he used to be a violent man. Uh, and so he had decided he was going to burn himself inside the house. Our houses were easy zambao, easy like a game zambao. So yeah, yeah, I catch up mutungi, mafuta, mattresses, aka kata kata, aka weka, aka washamoto. So for yeah, yeah, me, yeah, me lewa. He was really drunk. Ah, yeah, me washamoto. So from outside, it's when people were like, ah, kunam baba nani anafanya nini? Anachoma, kukuwa kuna toka moshi. It's people are thinking that there's no one inside, but kulikuwa na mtu ndani. I was I was I was in primary. I think probably in class. I can't really class class four five class four five class four class four, class four should be class four. And it was traumatizing because even if that house did not burn eventually, but I was inside. And I, I actually thought, this was it. <laughs> this is me burning down. And now I'm going to tell you, after that incident, there's a time, after that incident, your moto ikuwa kasana, ikuwa kubwa, so neighbors wali manage kuingia ndani, waka mvuta, waka zima moto, waka hamishwa. I can tell you, yo kitu iliingia ili kwangu, mbaka, I used to feel like running away from home. And one, actually one day I ran away. I even wrote a letter to my mother <laughs> because I felt like she, under, she understood me. She knew what I was, probably she, would, she was trying to understand what I was going through, but she had to allow us to survive because I also noticed she was the one providing most of the things. And again, she was a woman who came in with a child and in our community that was another story you're getting so she will not really speak up sana because people will be like probably on a fikiriana and i defend and i defend too na no na and again i mean this was my father i wanted a father so she could talk ruin anything so i wrote a letter and i wanted to run away and i started walking telling myself i will go to westlands na nikuwe chokora uko but yo kutembea nikafika nilikuwa na mamboga mwingine hapo nikakumbuka mama yangu i walked back home hiyo siku nilichapwa by the way because <laughs> nilikuwa nimeparara but i didn't know i was walking nilikuwa nimeparara ile ya uh, i was running away not that i was outside playing no i was running away and the second incident about yani vile kitu kilikuwa ni ile 
kuna siku i was from school class 5 we had talked we had been taught about judiciary legislation US legislate is my arms of the government so i i went those are there were friends of ours koyo plots i went and asked them alikuwa yeye na sister yake i went and asked them about i was asking them about those things then someone told me baba yako anakuja <laughs> but it was too late it's like he had already seen where i was as i was running back to the house so him the moment he entered the house he told me rudy palu umetoka and none and up to date i hate those words like rudy palu umetoka what do you mean <laughs> so mimi nikadhani ah leo nimeachwa nifanye nini i go out and play so mimi nikarudi pahali nilikuwa nimetoka i went back to those friends of mine when again i had a roar with my name rose and i was like eh what have i done i walked pole pole back to the house i was beaten i did not know what i had done i did not have the energy to ask but i was just being beaten the dishes were the other times i was being beaten beyond the dishes were all clean but today the dishes was were clean the house was clean I, I i was just from school my uniform was clean i had washed it like there was nothing that would make you beat me is it because i ran when 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 you were coming i i did not understand but i was beaten and then he told me nimchemshie <laughs> maji i went and boiled that water so hot very hot and i told myself i'm going to burn him with this water even if i'm going to land in juvenile i'd rather be in that juvenile than stay with this person here and i made it hot over 100 degrees celsius and i placed it kwa kasuku there's also a story about this kasuku yeah kwa hiyo kasuku and i was walking towards the sitting room with, with that kasuku i was determined to burn him but the moment i was almost getting near him my legs weakened my hands also got weak i placed the kasuku down i stood i just looked at him he he wasn't he, he didn't know i was looking at him just looked at him i took that water nikaeka kwa thermos nikampelekea nikaka nikarudi nikaka hapo kwa kitchen i was waiting for my mom so my mom would come and find me crying and she'd be like ame kuchapa i knew she, she i knew she knew things were not okay inside this house but probably ile kuni how she would come and up and defend me was 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 hard i even stole her money i was beaten too on that day but stealing that money was not ile at i was stealing it for a different reason i was stealing to send a message to them i, I wanted to become rebellious But that day my dad said something. He said, "Hiyo si tabia watu wa kwetu. Hiyo ni tabia watu wa kwao. Pingine ya kina mama yao." Those words sank so deep. So deep. And now it made sense because my neighbors kids used to ask their mothers, "Vile baba Samantha anafungia nga uyu nini rose kwa nyumba ni baba yake kweli they used to ask and even one kid ever asked me uyu ni baba yako kweli they they used to ask me because they will see you know kids see things they will see they will even come and greet me up kwa window i allow me fungiwa utatoka nje <laughs> it used to be it used to be yeah but i i i i i adjusted i got used to it but now whenever we used to close school straight home I, w- i would go to ugenya to my mom's home where she was born i, w- I would just tumefunga tu leo either leo usiku ama ke- the following day asubuhi i will be traveling i would go home and anytime we opening school and i have to come back i would cry niacho nyumbani uko ushago nisome uko i did not want to come back at all because for me it was not good i could not say 
when I'm hurting, I could not say when I'm happy, I could not say, I could not play, I could not just be a kid who's growing up. I would, I was like an, a, a small adult. You have to behave maturely. You don't, and I think I became an introvert through that. I never used to talk Kitambo, never. You would hurt me and I would just look at you. you like, ah, okay. And I think it also trained me to accept being disrespected. You will disrespect me and I'll be okay with it. Because it was okay, even Kitambo. It's okay to do that to me. And of course, how he used to treat me used to affect also how our house helps would look at me. Because some of them also just gained the courage of mistreating me because they saw him doing whatever he was doing. Some house helps used to lock me inside. And then <laughs> there was this cowboy, Kasuko, I was saying there's a story about it. There's a, there was a cowboy, Kasuko. One aunt of mine used to lock me inside. She would leave. The moment my mother has left and my dad has left, she would also leave <laughs> an hour after that and lock and, and, and lock me inside. Na hii kasuku ya cowboy. So, hii kasuku ilifai kue maalipangu pa kujisaidia. I was to help myself from, from there. That was my toilet. And in the evening when she comes back, she will come back before they come back. Ninena naosha, yo ni during holidays. Ninenda ni naosha yo kasuku. Ninena mwaga, ni naosha kasuku. It will be used for the following day. And I could not tell this. Hata kazi ya nyumbo nyo onye waluko na fuck what you wanna dip you ama something. It was me who would do them. But I could not tell this to my, to my, to my parents. So the, 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 the way he treated me, it made people also treat me that way. And my mom, in as much as she would want to defend me, there was a reason why she would just, you know, at some point back off Kidogo. But there was a day I had her telling him. In fact, that's the day I knew, ah, <laughs> this is not my dad. <laughs> I think my mom saw me getting so hurt. He told him. This is not your child. This is my child. This is my child. And I've never been so proud of my mother like that day. I am her child. So people should stop. But that, that, that didn't change a lot because even if she would say it, he would still do whatever he wants. At the end of the day, he was the man of the house. And there was nothing a woman would go back and tell, Uko nyumbani na mtu It would be like, ah, wewe. We. So I grew, these things used to affect me, but I did not, I did not notice. I, I was getting suppressed. I was putting myself in a certain corner. There were things that I was allowing myself to just experience. Because I cannot defend myself, then probably this is the right thing. You are supposed to respect your elders, and what your elders are saying or doing is always right. So, ukianza kubishana now, we were seeing Tuto Mzuri, and I always wanted to be Tuto Mzuri, the best in performance, the best in everything. I had to maintain that. The last encounter I had with him is I was in, I, I, we did our exam and the results came out. I was no longer in top three. I was, I, I was number eight. And as usual, when you fail, they tell you it's because you're playing too much, and you, there's no playing you're playing. So. He went and bought gifts for the first three in our, in, in our class and then in the whole stream. That is something he never used to do when I was top three. He would gift me at home. That is true. He would gift me. He would, like, top three, he would gift me at home. But now this one, I was not top three. And that specific, that specific year and that specific time, he decided he was going to award people in the streams. He came, he gifted people, and I remember he said, Simnona, mimi mtutongwa kianguka si amianguka. Eh, mwona kama nimekua bias, apana, sijampatia zawadi. Kwa sababu mfana nini? Amianguka. I'm number eight out of a stream of 60-something students. Not even stream, a class. So, 
she, he said he said it ameanguka na watu wameanguka wafanye nini hawapatiwi zawadi i know this is so harmless but you should have seen the laughter that came in with that my 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 classmates like it was it was it was not like i was a constant failure <laughs> and number 8 is not a failure <laughs> he, he he the way he placed it it made some people just some kids just decide to use that one as a, as a, a reason to just pull my neck pull just have games with me so we closed school i just placed it in my mind this guy doesn't like me he just doesn't like me my mama my mom is no is no longer fight, is no longer fighting for me so this these two guys don't like me i went home and told my grandmother my mother and my father don't like me then when i was at home a call came in and i was told he was he was sick for some time and he passed away up to date i actually don't know whether i was mourning his death or i was mourning for the pain he had inflicted in me or i was i don't know <laughs> i honestly don't know but i cried i really cried probably i cried because i did not now i was I was going back to not having a father the father that i was really longing for and i would go back to square one and probably I was crying because of the beatings he had given me when i was right and and when i was wrong like when i had no mistake and when i had mistakes or maybe i was crying because of the neglect he had given me he would you will just see openly that there's, there's his favorite kid and there's you it was so open so he left i cried i still don't know up to date <laughs> what really i was crying about but we went back to square one no dad just me and mom but Uh, the, the 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 house helps used we, we we had after that period they came in my sister was so aggressive if you would throw words at her she would throw back the exact same words because for her my dad had to, taught her a mechanism of defense she would throw them right back to you but i couldn't i used to see that as tabia mbaya she would not do that So when he went I was just there. I just went back to zero. And at some point just, we just told our mom we don't want to see any how how house help in in our house. His photo used to be on our, on our wall. The moment we just come in we used to when we moved into the room you would just get into our house you would see his picture. I used to have nightmares. <laughs> I told my mom you need to remove that picture there. I I don't want to see it. We we don't want to see it. anymore it's he's gone we are done so in 2007 a year after my stepdad had passed away i got to meet my dad my real dad apparently he had been looking for me <laughs> it was funny i met him in in in, a, in the national music festivals where i was i was presenting uh while in the house there's a day my mom came and asked me a very funny question she was like uh, if you ever get to know that the one who died was not your dad and that your dad is a mzungu <laughs> would you go with him there's one thing my mom feared she knew 100% sure that if any other person present himself as my dad i would go with him because i felt like she didn't like me she was for that the other side and not me but i loved i i love i do love my mom honestly i do love my mom so i sat and I, i was thinking what she didn't know is that i already knew that was not my dad there's one of my aunts who had told me <laughs> that is not your dad so i i, I just i was like uh, i just thought about it about it and I, i told her i wasn't to go with them i don't know them you're my mom 
So I think that gave her a, a, an open space to finally tell me about me having my own dad and yeah, he was looking for me. So it was arranged and uh, I went for the music festivals in Kisumu in, in that same year. Even when I was presenting our shai the, the Shairi, I was looking at that, at, at, the, at, the, at, the, at the congregation. I was looking at those people trying to picture who looks like me. Who, who, who looks like me? Who, 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 you know, I was saying, Anaisa kwa nakaji. Eh? So I came out. <laughs> we came out. We were celebrating. But I'm celebrating. My mind is I, I really want to see my dad. How does he, does he look like me? Is there kuna ka resemblance nini? I was waiting. So he just comes. Actually, he just came. I have never hugged someone as tight as I. I, I hugged my dad that day. I was so happy. Like, this is my dad. This is actually my dad. So <laughs> we hugged, we talked. We didn't really get into what happened. It was, yeah, so you're here. Uh -huh. It was stories about me. For the first time, it was, it was about me. It was about how are you doing? What has, what has been going on? How is school? And, you know, for, for, for the first time, I felt like someone was concerned about my well-being. Someone wanted to know what is really going on with me. And we talked, and uh, when time came, he left. I didn't really want to... He, he, he had told me he has a family and all that. So I was like, ah, okay. He told me I have a brother. I was like, ah, I would love to see my brother. Because at home I don't have a brother. I love my sister. But I was happy to know that I also have a brother. And that was it. So from there, we would communicate. When I went back home, we would communicate. And even, <laughs> and even by the time I was doing my KCP, I, I, anytime I would receive, I receive a success card, I just wanted to know if it's my dad's. But I, funny enough, it came the last day I finished my exam. Then it came. And then I was called, ah, you have a success card here. Then I looked at it, it was my dad. I was like, ah, now this is the success card I've been waiting. <laughs> I've been waiting for. So it was just nice. It was okay. Then we just we we have been in constant communication to date. We talk, we share. We can, actually, we can call and talk and say a lot of things. And if there's something he has really tried to instill in me, he has really tried to make me understand that. That was then. Whatever stories that came along with that, whoever is saying the truth or not, it doesn't really matter. You you might have become you might have been the the victim of so many circumstances, this thing happened. But the, more, the main thing he usually, he usually tells me is that I want you to stop being, be, being the victim now. I want you to now rise, about, rise above being that, the, the victim. I want you to stand for yourself. If there's something that is, you feel like I'm saying that is not right, tell me it's not right. By the way, he has really advocated for that. I think probably he noticed that I, al I allow my environment and people around me to, to tell me what to do. And what they say is what I, I do. I don't really take time to sit and think about what I want, what, is, what I feel is good for me. or if, Even if the advice I'm being given is right, is it the ultimate right? Is, it a, is there a way I can do it? Can, can I, I can follow it, but on my own terms, not on the terms of others. Let me take you back to class six. After we we buried and we came back, we opened the school and we were in school. So in class six, we, in, we were having a science class and our teacher was 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 teaching us about reproductive the reproductive system. So I get to learn about the reproductive system of males and the reproductive system of females. Then we also had a, a, a club called a chill club. In chill club now, we are being also taught about our sexualities, like what a, how, how a lady should be and how a, a gent should be. And from those classes, I started realizing, now I could connect, connect the dots, what my aunt was doing to me initially and what was the right thing. In fact, the, I had my fa the, first, the name lesbian my first time in class six. When the teacher said, girl to girl relationship, intimacy is not right. 
Nobody should put you through that. God created male and female, not male and male or female to female. If someone ever does that to you, that person is doing something wrong, you should report them. But I couldn't report anything at that time because the person you're talking about was no, was no, was no longer <laughs> in, in the vicinity. I could not really say, oh, that I would only say, ah, so that was just it. Then I now slowly started accepting, now accepting like psychologically that what, what was being done to me was wrong. I will not lie that at some point it used to affect me. I would want to do some. I would want. I would. I would want to, to do what. I would want to feel how 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 I used to feel when she was doing things. I will not lie that it, it never crossed. It used to cross my mind at times. I was like, ah, okay. But funny enough, I really never got myself to. To want to do to do something. I feared that I would I would do this and I would mess even my own sister, you know, because she was also growing. And you know, kalongo longo, mnacheza your old girls in 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 a compound, plotik ona wasena wengi, mtu anakrema baba, yeah, me and your baba and all that. So I we I never really got to. I started playing after my dad died. I now I was now playing ile kucheza ukweli. So I would play, but I really didn't want to do some things. So I used to take myself as nobody would understand, but I had my reasons. I don't know why, but I just had my reasons. So I went and joined, uh, I went to Ngara Girls High School. And I met a group of friends there. So what I, I ended up becoming, <laughs> instead of practicing lesbianism because it was a, a very nice avenue for doing it some people would, would even would even do there were rumors that some people were doing it but I've, i never saw any but there were rumors that people were doing it i mean that was a nice avenue for me to to do it but I had psychologically now understood what was right to be done and what was not right to be done so my friends and i formed <laughs> A girl squad that was for for girls who were a bit. We used to be a little bit big, and we were tomboys. Now we were tomboys. We're not. We were not really into other women, but we were into ourselves as tomboys. We were We were girls who were behaving like men, even though we would dress, <laughs> would speak so much. The way we would walk. Would speak so much. Ungeshtua wa tuengine, ungeshtua wa form once tuengine wa fanye vitu, but sisi. And those things were building up slowly, pole pole. Like those things that I had gone through, zikuwa na jibuild to. Nikama kuna kapain nilikuwa ni mesapress. I wasn't talking about it. So nilikuwa na nikama nilikuwa na express in the most awkward way. And in the meantime, it's when I was realizing also about my, 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 my medical conditions. My reproductive system was having its own problems. So I was, you know, like, like a confusion. Yeah, situation and stuff. Kuna my, 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 my performance wasn't that good. In that school, I wouldn't say it was good. It wasn't really good. It wasn't really good. But I, I would say, kwa stream, I would make it to the top thirty-five. Kwa shule, kwa yo stream ya from once. So, so at at, at some point, iliona tu apana apa. This school is not helping me. I'm having a lot of problems, CV. And at some point, ni kuntuna mashida I'm collapsing for no good reason. And you go to hospital and some doctors are like, she's being hysterical. I call her hysteria. Like no one wants to really know what's wrong with you. So you come to realize, ah, um, stana, damu yake inafanya nga nini? Inaisha. Inakatina terem kachini. Kiterem kachini kuna sa? Anaenda. So, iyo too. Like things were piling up instead of 
because now you, you have your dad, even if he's not really present, but it's supposed to be reducing some load. But kumbe kuna vitu li suppress, zinakuja. And others are, are now adding up. So I, I transferred. I transferred. I went to a mixed school. In the mixed school now I knew about males and females. There's nothing like ni, 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 males and females. I, my be, I had my best friend from my best, my first best male friend from that school. We even finished school, even to date we still talk. And that person helped me really shape on what I would think, what, what I would think about a man. I don't have a perfect picture of an ideal guy really, I, an ideal man or rather an ideal father. I do not know how a father is supposed to behave apart from what I have read in books or probably gone into a family, like when you go for events and you are hosted in a, ha in a, in a house and I would see the way a, a, a man is treating their family like, ah, that looks nice, that looks great. I'd be like, ah, that's how someone is supposed to be treated. But personally, as a kid growing up, I never had an ideal, like, I didn't know how a man is supposed to treat me. I, don't, I didn't know how I'm supposed to be interacting with them. I didn't know when he's disrespecting me or when he's actually respecting me. I, I didn't know. I was like, these things are normal. He's doing the wrong thing to you. And he's like, this thing is normal. It's okay. From looking at my mother's life, how she had to like work hard to make sure everything is running in our in our in our house and having to see how the society perceived her as i was growing and having to see her inside inside marriage and her as a widow there's definitely one thing as i had said i will not want to have so i had in my mind i wanted to have a family where it's we, we are it's official yes and apart from it being official we are married and we are peaceful there's there, there, there are no wrangles there's no outside force coming in and trying to ruin things for us our kids are okay they have a place they can come and tell us mom dad this is what happened and we would advise or even discipline accordingly. I, I viewed that. So th this affected the kind of relationships I would choose to get into. There was a type of guy I had formed in my head. But I didn't notice the type of guy I was forming, I had formed in my head, was not the type of guy I was attracting to me, I was, I was attracting towards me. The type of men I used to attract had qualities that resembled that one of my stepfather. There was something about them that even if I felt disrespected, it was kind disrespect because I was used to it. It was something I'd seen and it was normal. They would, you, you, you would do something and I would be okay with it and you would praise me for it yet I'm hurting. I'd be like, ah, this is how it's done. And uh, with, with, with the time, I've gotten into, into a relationship. I'm, I'm still suppressing my feelings. I'm still allowing things to be done to me because I, I want this, I have this perfect picture. It's supposed to work out. It's supposed to work out. My, my desire to have a perfect husband, a perfect boyfriend, a perfect family in the end, because I enter relationships with <laughs> a focus on something. I, I, I've, I, I've never dated someone with, with, the, with the main thing of just having fun and leaving. That's never closer. Every, I enter into a relationship, and I think people had the right words for me. They just came with the right words. They would be like, we are doing this to the end. We are getting, we are going to get married. And no, 
marriage is such a was such a big deal for me. I like that's the man, and yeah, I will enter into a relationship. It's not working. Everybody's seeing it's not working, but I will still stick there. You will even mess me up. You will even mess my life. But you know, I think I was so desperate to prove this point that I do. I will. I will not let history repeat itself on me. I'm. I'm fighting this battle. We are. We are not. I would hold on. You would mistreat me. You would call me names. Names that I used to even hear when I was a kid. They would affect me. And I would say, the fact is, I've, people would see me out and think I'm strong. But in real sense, I was dying inside. I was battling with my self-esteem. I, I was a shy person. But pretending to be bold. I would come and, yeah, and smile. And you'd be like, ah, that lady is strong. There was no strength there. That was a weakling. Because I was, I was struggling. I'm like, I need to get out. But no, I'm not going to get out. This thing has to work. So when my, my first relationship fell, I also collapsed with this. <laughs> I was so bad. I collapsed with this for some time. And, and by the time I was trying to come up, when I was coming up, it, it's like when I was healing, I was not healing, Ilea. Relax, get to study yourself, get to heal, get to know what you really want and not what you just want that time, what you would want in the long run. I was just healing, Ilea. He's gone. I ain't the two. I ain't the two. Ni mepoa, ni mepoa, ni mepoa. So even by the time I was getting into my other relationship, I was healed of that other guy. But I was not healed of the, the, the pain I was carrying. I was not healed of those words I used to hear. I was not healed. I had not, it's like I, I, I loved my mom, but I had not like accepted that she loved me, just that she, 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 had, she had a difficulty in expressing it because she had to do things for us to survive. So I get into this relationship, it comes with a lot of drama. And... Uh, but I, I'm, I, I st I'm still determined that this is what I want. This is what I want. And inside there, I get pregnant. And this pregnancy now comes with hormones that bring an outburst. It's like finally what my father was saying, my dad would tell me, stand up for yourself. It's like finally the hormones were doing it for me. <laughs> So amid a lot of confusion, because my pregnancy came with a lot of confusion, came, it, it, I'm, I'm confused. I'm, I'm trying to understand myself. I'm trying to understand this pregnancy. I'm trying to understand my environment. The truth is I was lost. I was so lost. I was a confused person. But I wouldn't talk to anyone. I wouldn't tell anyone, hey, honestly, this is what is going on with me. Mm -mm. I was still carrying my pain from Kitambo. So... At home is when I now was, was thinking, Julie, you're pregnant. Like, ah, I'm pregnant. So I'm pregnant. Outside, actually, I'm pregnant. It was them. Now it's now thinking, I'm pregnant. I'm not married. Now everything came. What will my group think of me? What will, I'm already having a, a, a very con, 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 contradicting and dramatic relationship. It is, involved, it is involving a lot of things. What will people say? I'm already getting attacks. So this is going to bring triple or even deca attacks. There's something like that. Attacks to me. And worst of all, this baby is just like me. She's out, he or she is going to be born out of wedlock. This is horrible. Horrible. I wanted to hate myself, but I told God this. <laughs> this baby should be a boy. Because we want to close <laughs> we want to close this issue of anyone in my line getting pregnant, a firstborn getting pregnant <laughs> outside wedlock. Let it let if ever I ever get a girl, it'll be a second bonuko. But who you? I shall go to Kijana. To fungi tu i maneno mungu. 
And this boy will be called this. It's something I just said. I didn't know. I just said, yeah. My mom knew my. I had, I had explained to her my 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 nini. She had seen me suffering even initially. So, I know it really did hurt her. It did. That is. I know that is the plain truth. It did. It did hurt her. But I was her daughter. And if she was not going to ex- accept me, who will ex- accept me outside here? No one. So she just said that. Take care of yourself. We're going to support you. Even though I knew it really did hurt. So one day, in my mother's house, we, I don't know what happened. I can't really remember, but she said something. And this thing touched a nerve. It's like it touched something that has been hurting me from long ago. I've never been in in an argument with my mom or even shouting or even talking back to her, never. But for the first time, I did it. I spoke back. And you know, instead of feeling a regret, like, you know, the way you're supposed to say, hey, what have I done? I felt some form of calmness, like, yes, you should speak. So I said the first time I said it, my mom was shocked, by the way, she was shocked. I, I, I later got shocked also. I was like, ah, that was me. We left it at that. As time was going, the second person it hit was the father to my son, my son now, the, the, my, 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 my baby daddy. Let, 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 let me call him that. At that time, he would say something. Probably he meant it, he meant well. But I would not take it that way. I would carry, it's like I was carrying a load. And immediately you say something that touches anything concerning that load, I would burst. This was becoming now my turning point. I was now, I was now becoming a mother. And I was preventing, I was preventing my past from really coming in. I'm already pregnant out of wedlock. My first fear has actually come into a reality. And I'm getting attacked from different angles. I'm, fi- I'm, 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 I'm trying to survive from these attacks. I'm trying to survive, <laughs> like maintaining my own dignity. I'm trying to bring myself back to life. I'm trying to ensure that this baby actually survives. Because with the way things were going, I felt like I was going to lose it. Because I was also losing myself. I was losing myself. I would literally just break down. You come, at times I would not even talk to anyone. You would call, I would not pick your calls. I would lock myself in the house for a whole week. I won't come out. Not even a week. I think it was a month I didn't even come out or even two. I'm, I will not go to church. I will just be indoors. Not watching, not chatting, not, or even the TV will just be open when I'm not watching it. I'm not even listening to music. But I, but I even stopped singing completely. Songs irritated me. Anything news irritated me. I will just eat. I was not talking. Or if I talk, I'll just say very few words and with specific people. It reached a point even if my phone would ring, I would know who's calling. Because now people had, you see, this is a, a, a pregnancy out of wedlock. No one wants to be associated with you, majority of the people. People are sidelining me now. Everyone, you're no longer their friend. Nobody's calling, nobody's checking up on you. Like if someone calls you, it's out of gossip. Like, you dakutu, and dakujua, eh, kunenda aje. So they go and say from my inbox or they send your voice note. This is what she said about that condition of theirs. And it became so much. So I was bursting. Small thing, the tiniest thing, I was bursting. And this bursting came in and when finally I gave birth, I did not want anything to mess up with my plans. I was still having my fear. I was still carrying it. I was still having my pains. I feared, now another fear came in. I feared not having to raise my baby with the father and ending up to raise him with a different father 
and this father ends up mistreating, mistreating my baby. No, it was not, it was not supposed to be happening. Liwe liwalo, you know. So I really struggled, you know. I was really struggled with my 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 guy to make to make our our family work. It had to, like, akuna any other option. It had to. And then the family, the family, they're like, yeah, we make a ball. So what are you, what is your plan? We make a funguwa. We You know. And ob- obviously, many people push for you guys to to get married. But after I gave birth, and all of a sudden I started seeing a second fear coming to reality. I started seeing myself becoming a single mother. Not because the dad had disappeared no he was there but i would sit and look at things and be like eh what if what if you know the what if what if what if what if what if so i started seeing that thing happen and i was like no we have to fight for this <laughs> we have to fight for this we have to fight for this and i i at that time i would i think i got desperate i would text so much i would call so much. I wanted, if, I, if this one has failed, if getting pregnant out of wedlock, it will fail. Si ocha hii ingine ya perfect marriage happen ata. Si inge tu box kubitu zendepua. So, and our, our families were like, yeah, you guys should not do what. My family was like, yeah, you guys should not do what. Sorry. So, I'm fighting for this. It has to happen. Ooh, I'm really trying to, I'm pushing, you know, there's a point you can push and even push a man to a point like he can actually decide, start, start disliking you, start avoiding you because you're becoming too much. And I should say this was my turning point because it's like just one day I woke up and I was fed up. I woke up and looked at my son and I was fed up. I, I was tired. I, I, I was like, I won't, I won't call or text anymore. I won't ask for things to, to, cause when I was pregnant, I, we, we, we would at times stay together at the time I was, on, I was not there. So I was just tired. Not that I'm giving up on the relationship. I'm like, I mambo yangu ya kufanya fanya kuskuma skuma vitu, wacha hii. He dead. What are you share? And and I said, I would want this man, this boy, to grow with the love of both his parents. But I don't want to subject myself into more humiliation than the ones I've already accepted. I've already found myself in. And for this boy to survive, I need to stand up for myself. I need to stop allowing people rub because I would get into Facebook and I would find very funny messages on my messenger. I would be abused. And something I never mentioned when I was pregnant, there was even an issue of me being HIV positive. Like someone just came up with a story and some people stigmatized me because of it, because someone said. So I finally delivered, I was breastfeeding my kid and some, some people were surprised. Ah, I'm total. I was like, what is wrong with me breastfeeding my son? I left it at that. So my, my fears, it's like some were coming and others were fading away. So I'm, I've already gotten pregnant and I saw no life after getting pregnant out of wedlock. But actually there was life. I was, I was living my life. I was having my baby and nothing had stopped me from moving on with my life. There's, no, there's, no, there's nothing like... You cannot go ahead. I was going ahead. I was going to push through this. Not that I was not thinking of how my son will grow without a father. I was, I, I was so afraid of him. This is a boy. It's not a girl. <laughs> that I cannot lie to myself that I'll, I'll raise my boy to like a man. I'm a woman. And a woman who doesn't even actually know how men are supposed to. <laughs> To be so, I will not say I'm the perfect person to raise this boy alone. I will need help. I will need the father to be present because someone can be a great father, but maybe probably not a good husband. 
So I, I said, no, for these things to work, I have to be calm and cool, even with the dad. So our relationship will be there. We just do things. Whatever comes, comes. Whatever goes, goes. And I left it at that. It's, it's like having, having this baby made me realize I need to become a better parent. I need to shape him in a different way. Not like I will be barring him from fa have, facing his own pains, but I wouldn't want them to come from me. I wouldn't want him to feel like I wasn't there. I don't, know, I don't want him to feel like I allowed people to, to hurt him. So I have, I had, I've had a series of intensive thinking about myself, who I am, who I want to be, where I'm, I'm heading to. My fear, my perfect, my perfect perception of a family was not bad. Just that I was viewing it at the wrong, with, the wrong, with the wrong lenses. So finally, I gave my, myself a room for making mistakes. They were bound to happen. I, I was supposed to allow myself to make mistakes and accept them because accepting that I've made a mistake and looking for a way of correcting it was just the best way to solve everything. So I had to accept my mistakes. I, have to, I had to accept my childhood. I had to accept what was going on in my relationship. Like, I had to accept a lot of things. I, would, I had to accept that I'm a mother and I need to make it different. I had to learn to defend myself because this kid needed to learn how to defend himself. He needed to know that if something is wrong, he would come and speak up. Or if he is not sure of something, he would come and ask without feeling like someone is going to, you know, attack him. Or any, like, I just wanted a safe space for him. If I see you, if I see you doing something to my son and I feel it's wrong, I will tell you outrightly, don't do that. We don't do that here. You don't do this. And that's how, even when you're, when, when you're having an argument with, with his father, you'll be like, that is wrong. It is really wrong. And you know, you're holding it. Because I don't want him to think that arguing and fighting and, you know, throwing those big, big words is normal. It's not. I want him to understand it differently. Because I also came to realize a man will treat you the way he sees his father treating his mother and not he, he loves his mother men, men don't love their, do love their mothers but they will not treat you the way they treat their mothers they treat you the way they see their fathers treating their mothers so i will not want him to see me being mistreated and he thinks this is normal this is this is how it is i don't want him to disrespect women and i don't want him to disrespect men too so I have to behave, and he has to behave. And that's how I just did it. I just said, mm -mm, it's enough. I'm going to start afresh, clean, and clear. Whoever feels like joining me to, to build my life, because it's like I'm building my life again from the, gro from the ground. I'm, I'm on a clean sheet. I'm now, I'm now understanding men better. I'm not understanding what I'm supposed to be accepting and what I'm, I'm, I'm not supposed to be accepting. I can now sit down and look at Webageno as a case study and say, aha, this is how I'm supposed to be treated. No, this is not how I'm supposed to be treated. Actually, he, that's what I've been learning from him. If you treat me wrong, I just know. You, you did not treat me this way the other time. Why are you treating me this way this time? So this is how I'm not supposed to be treated. This is how I'm supposed to be treated. I will look at my friends from SMS. I will see how they also treat us around. I'll be like, ah, I'm supposed to be treated this way. I'll see how they communicate. So I believe standing for yourself is the best thing. My mother did a great job raising a woman. Because for one thing, I've seen her standing and fighting and insisting on standing for herself. But probably in, in that bit of raising, I would say parents should try and bond with their kids. Create that safe space where a kid would say, Mom, this is what is happening to me. Not let the world shape your child. Because he or she will one day change. And you will think that there's something wrong with them. No, there's nothing, nothing wrong with them. It is something they have grown up with. They just didn't have a space to bring it up. And when they finally bring it, bring, bring it up, it might be good or it might be nasty. Thank you.